nice to meet you, Martin. So, from what I've very okay, briefly... Again. What I can do is we're again. Oh! <laughs> take two, take two. This is what you, you get the performative thing, right? All right, cool. Hello there. As you just said, your name's Martin, my name's Chris. Uh, you said that you're a Satanist. Um, I, I would say, where I, where I say Satanist, because it's dangerous to kind of say you're, you're one thing, because people kind of polarize it and, and try and entrench views. So okay. I'm very open-minded. I'm an atheist first, first and foremost, I'm an atheist. Okay. Um, and I didn't know anything about Satanism until I was watching um, a YouTube channel about um, ages and, um, um, the atheist experience in the US. Oh yes, yes, with Matt, um, Matt Dillahunty. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they had someone from, I think someone from the Satanic Church or people phoned in talking about Satanism. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, so they're not this evil thing that Christianity or Christ certain churches have tried to make it out to be. Sure. Um, so I was like, okay, well maybe they're not all drinking blood and sacrifice, stupid stuff like that. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I'm listening to this. They seem perfectly reasonable. They 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 have issues with the church and God, the same reasons I would have issues with Christianity and Bibles and stuff. Um, okay. So and so yeah. then I watched a documentary about it, and then I decided to read up about it a bit more so I can educate myself on it before I can give an opinion about it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. So I had a lot of those ideas before I even knew they would fit in this satanic. Uh, okay. uh, world view. Yeah. Um, so maybe in that sense I'm a Satanist, but... So, I, I just want to jump in here, yeah. because basically, let me explain what I know about these things. Is yeah. When someone introduces themselves as a Satanist, they, they generally mean the one or two things, which is that they're an atheist who has understood that in America in particular, there is a church of Satan, um, yes. of which particularly emphasizes human rights, civil rights, uh, LGBT uh, issues, um, and usually the, the value of the self, right? You know, emphasize your importance in things and that you should look at yourself, right? The other side of Satanism is an actual organized movement that is generally underground, has a set of theological beliefs about certain, uh, certain uh, Messiah who would come, I think uh, a guy who was bald in the 19th century or something. I still have a lot to learn about this, but there is actually an actual form of, of Satanism. Uh, they actually have their own places that they meet. They have lots of, they're, they're very big on recording things with cameras and stuff like that. Um, so it's always important to know exactly which one you're, you're referring to. Yeah, see, this is, this yeah. is why I would be careful before I'd say I'm a Satanist because... Yeah, because it depends on exactly what that means, right? Like why, yeah. Why I would yeah. Yeah. Try to kind of, I mean, in terms of where I find myself right now at this point in life, it can change. But, um, I mean, I watched a documentary, it's called Hail Satan, Hail Satan Christian World. Um, and I absolutely champion what they're doing because I know in America there's, um, there's a very, uh, the Christian churches, evangelical, are, are very overpowering. They bully, they bully a lot of people. It's full overpowering. Well, so if, to me, on, yeah. If Satanism is about rebelling against something um, that's authoritarian, maybe, yeah, or that, um, then I would say in my atheism I could also be satanic in that sense that I'm rebelling. Right, I'm right. Just, so that's how you I don't believe in God. I rebel against um, Christian churches, evangelical churches, Catholic churches, whatever kind of right. church could just, overpowering. Sure. Trying to could, could I just clarify? Do you actually think that there is a god of some sort, or...? No, I don't believe... You, you, are, you are an atheist, so I, I'm sorry. I don't believe there are demons. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Just wanted to clarify. Any, yeah, no, that's fine. Any superstitious um, ideas, so, which is uh, what the gentleman who's now probably over there talking rubbish about me... Um, <laughs> okay. Well, wasn't listening. Wasn't listening to me. So, well, there are a few things here. Um, you know, decades ago, there was an actual problem in this country in particular, but also in America, with an over-conservative uh, effort and it was largely established and funded by religious groups, particularly Christian groups, to ban what it considered to be harmful media. And this is actually how we had things like, I'm sure if you play video games, if you go and you buy a certain video game, uh, you, they're actually pretty big, they're pretty big, yeah. Now I grew up in that, and I, and I remember being absolutely annoyed that we had this thing, and I think it was, is it Thomas, uh, Thomas Clark, I can't remember his name, very famous American Christian who was a lawyer, who went around making his living of advocating that uh, children should not play video games, there should be very strict ratings, and you have to adhere to those ratings, and they won't sell you a video game if you don't. 
right? And he, he was the guy who was going around saying that Doom influenced the Columbine killers. Okay. Yeah? I don't know if you're familiar with I Columbine know, killers. I know about Columbine. You know they used to play Doom? Both, yeah, both. I, I, there, there are people that used to say that the... the carry on. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I'm, just, I'm just sort of giving a background yeah, about yeah, over-conservative yeah. uh, efforts, mm -hmm. largely by Christian groups, that were misguided, I think, because they misunderstood exactly the influence of media. They misunderstood exactly what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing. They took a overzealous view of media, thinking that was the best way to make sure that people didn't become, in their view, Columbine killers, basically. They thought, yeah, you play vi yeah, video games yeah. at a young age, you're going to become a mass murderer yeah, as you grow older, I, right? I now, I don't hold to that view at all. And in fact, I would say that many Christians today don't hold to that view. Yeah. We hold to a more nuanced view where we acknowledge that media does influence people, but it's more people who have disabilities, who don't understand how to interpret things properly, who are easily influenced. Those yeah. are the things that actually, okay, you know, you probably don't want to have someone who's 18 who has mental issues, who has a history of poor mental health, shooting people and taking that as his main influence. That might yeah. be a bit, maybe maybe not that, right? Arm, arm population of guns that could potentially have mental health issues. Sure, right, right. There, there are many grounds yeah. for that, right? Yeah. But I think now that's no longer the issue. What the issue is in today's world, I think, is actually a progressive issue in that there are progressive uh, left-wing uh, political groups, activist groups, who are advocating for things that are so, so radically uh, different from the status quo that that is where the authoritarianism of today is coming from. So, for example, uh, there are now real uh, repercussions that Christians in particular, but also Jews and Muslims, but also anyone really, who doesn't conform to the LGBT view, will face in the workplace. If you, are, if you work somewhere and you happen to mention that you're a Christian and that you don't particularly think that homosexual sex is a good moral thing, then you are at a real severe risk of losing your job. In fact, you're no longer just at a risk of losing your job in the private sector, you're at risk of losing, uh, actually being taken to court under the hate speech laws. Because in this country, in the UK, uh, following legislation that came in a few years ago, if you say anything that is critical of LGBT, or anything that is critical of other religions, you can potentially be taken in and charged in court. Now I think that's authoritarianism. I think that's, in some sense, a form of light fascism. Yeah, and I, I, I'm very much against that, right? Yeah, I I'm quite. To, yeah, to, yeah. Um, you see, you can. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Yeah, sorry yeah. No you can do the same. It thing. happens a lot. You, people do that. You touch. But anyway, we should be free to critique ideas because it's through that critical aspect that we got from the Enlightenment. I would also argue you can find it in scholastic views in the church before that. But we have that view that we wanted to critique things, to know things, because if you can't critique it, how do you know if it's true or if it's just a bunch of nonsense? Yeah. And it's through that that we actually say, right, as Christians we have confidence in our beliefs because we can defend our beliefs. We can say, right, uh, we can talk about doctrinally we believe this, this is why we believe it, here is how it's based in, in reality, it's not anti-reality, it's not some pie in the sky idea, but it actually has practical effects for the real world. And we've had to learn to do that because there were many Christians that before, back before the Enlightenment, they didn't do that, right? There were groups that didn't. And those groups largely don't exist now. There are a few. You, there are like things like Scientologists who don't base it necessarily in reality as such, but rather in their own uh, anti-realistic views. I, I, I decided to, uh, on the way here, because mm. I came here a different route, yeah. I happened to go past the Church of Scientology. Ah, right, yeah. And I thought, you know what, I've walked past it so many times, like, I'm going to go in now. Oh, did you go in? Out of interest, oh, just yeah, yeah. in my curiosity. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Really? I wouldn't sign up to it. It's, no, I, it's I wouldn't either. It's it is, yeah. Made up and you can tell by behaviour. If you want to know... Writer, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Rupert Ru uh, Hubbard? Ronnie L. Hubbard, Ron yeah, that's it, yeah. Right, yeah. He was, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, by argument, is he failed now? I mean... <laughs> yeah. well, he said that yeah. um, the, the best thing to is to make up a religion. Yeah. Well, he Smoke also uh, campaigned that smoking doesn't hurt you. He was one of the last people that held on to the... Uh, you, you can watch sermons of his, and I've watched some, yeah. where he's telling people uh, to ignore the evidence that smoking causes cancer. Uh, smoking actually gets rid of cancer. That was one of the things he says, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know when things are a cult because of the way they, uh, how they handle leaving. In other words, if you yeah. were a Christian, if you said, actually, I don't want to be a Christian, and you left Christianity, what would happen is I would pray for you, and I'd be annoyed. <laughs> I'd be upset. I'd be like, oh, no. Right? But there are other things that I would say uh, are indicative of cult behavior, like Jehovah's Witnesses, I think, were a cult.
And the reason yeah. why is because having looked into Jehovah's Witnesses and having friends who are part of Jehovah's Witnesses, when they leave, they are told that they are not allowed to have anything to do with their family yeah, if their family it's, it's is still in. Cult right, and that's and that's that's when it's like, then, and literally they, they they have a doctrine of shunning, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, a, and I, I have same. I've I've seen. She tells me all about it. I yeah. yeah. Likewise. Um, and that's how we know what cults are. But I, what I will call you to is not to a particular religion. I'm not saying you need to be Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox. You don't need to go to this church. You don't need to do any any particular form of religion but rather that I will call you to be a disciple of Christ. So what that means is that you pick up the Bible, which is the earliest historical manuscripts we have of someone called Jesus, who was a man of Nazareth, who claimed to be the Messiah of the Old Testament that was prophesied through a thousand and so, or thousand or two thousand years beforehand, that there would be a Messiah who would come, who would be the savior of the world, who would take on the, the sin, both past, present and future of all who want to, and he will put it on his shoulders and he will pay the penalty. So what that means, practically speaking, is me and you both do things that we regret. Me and you both make mistakes, but we both mess up, yeah? I'm not perfect. It's human nature, right? It's human part. But the difference here is that I believe as a Christian that there is someone who is willing to pay that for me. And I'm not just talking about the things I have done. I'm talking about the things I will do and the things I may even be currently doing. There are things that we all struggle with, right, in life. You know, it's as simple as like waking up one day on the wrong side of bed and you know, being a bit annoyed that your brother or your family or whoever, and you say something you regret, it's like, oh, well, you know, that, that, was, that wasn't great, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, every day we are in need of a savior because we are in the ourselves in need of saving because we are not perfect, right? Now, when I say things like in need of a savior, what I'm referring to is the fact that I am far beyond perfect. I'm not nowhere near. But if there is, as I would say, a God who is perfect morally, then if I wish to be with that God, then I can't on my own merit justify any rational grounds for being, for being with that God. I can't say, hey, uh, you know what, if there is a God, if, if, if this prayer thing actually works, I should be with you, because I, I want to be with you, and therefore I should be. They're like, well, no, because I'm a, quite a bad guy, really, in comparison with a perfect being. I might be great compared to some other people, you know, I might be great compared to Hitler, but I'm, how, how do I measure compared to an almighty being? who is perfect in his own nature. Well, I don't really do well at all. So in order for me to justify why I should be with God, God is the one who has to act, not me. Because God needs to do something to meet me where I am in my sin and say, I'm not gonna just wipe it under the, the carpet because that wouldn't be just. You know, and a God that isn't just isn't a loving God. You know, a God that says to Hitler, don't worry about it, it's all good. That's not loving, it's not just. But there is a, there is, in the umbrella term of what it means to be loving, you have to be just and you have to be merciful. And if you're not the right amount of those two things, you're, you can't be said to be loving. Like I said, a God that just forgives Hitler is not a loving God. A God that never forgives anyone who truly seeks repentance is also not a loving God. So the God that we believe in is a God that loves you where you are and he wants you to have that free gift of salvation. And he offers it to you. It's in your back pocket like a check that you can cash in whenever you want. All you have to do is accept who he is and what he's done for you. And that is the message of Christianity. And that's what I would be calling you to. And I've yeah, spoken I, for I a while, but go on, I mean, sure. I talk, I talk to lots of different people here. That's good. Whenever I see, you know, people doing Certainly. a similar thing on, on the high street or whatever, I stop and chat. Yeah. Sometimes they want to they wanna shout down, oh, fire! Test. Which means you've got to shout back because they're trying to control the situation. Um, and some people want to have a dialogue like this, which is really yeah. good. This is the best yeah. way to do it. Right, exactly, um, yeah. This is the best way to do it. Not hellfire, shout, yelling, shout and, and yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm used to kind of the message. You understand the idea of... Narrative yeah, I mean, I mean, ultimately it is going to be the same, same message. Thing. Jesus yeah. dies on the cross, mm. sin, blah, 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 mm. you know, Jesus, yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pay up or you know follow up or you, you go to heaven if you don't you go to hell like, well it depends where you want to be all that sort of stuff. It, it really um, does depend where you want to be like if you want to be with God then he gives you a way to do that if you don't want to be with God that's fine he won't he won't force you to be with him there will be a place of absence where there is no God and that's where if you want to be you will be you see what I mean no, I see, I see what you mean. Yeah. I, I went to church as a kid um, up until 17, 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so you're familiar. So, yeah, I yeah. sat in circles, Bible yeah. passages. And, yeah. Um, but now I'm 
more aware of where there were errors that at the time maybe I wouldn't have had the thinking or confidence to say something. So um, can I can I just maybe now fueled yeah. a little mm. bit by my say, my Satanism as in activism Satanism. Um, now maybe I can I can sort of fight back. Punch punch back intellectually. You know, like, oh that's cool. Not not so, actually literally. I don't know, no, no, I, I I didn't take literally that's uh, so. in words. Yeah yeah. So I guess for you if I, had to, if I had to boil it down to two things, intellectually or emotionally, what do you think your biggest objection is to God? Does it come from an intellectual point of view? Is it about manuscripts? Is it about um, philosophical well, arguments, me, scientific evidence? Any, uh, or is it like... evidence that, that a God exists. Um, okay. That your God or any God. Okay. Know, obviously yours... Yeah, mine's, mine's, mine's a specific. A whole sea of oh, absolutely, yeah. Gods and Many people make claims about who that God is. And cults and religions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everyone thinks they've yeah. got the answer. Yeah. Um, so I, I but I do want to say though that you also think that you have the answer because if you're I, if you're I, positing I that God. there is no God. No, no, I'm not saying there is no God. That that would be that would be. Um, I can't I can't do that because if I say to you there is no God, then you can go well. You're, you're making God. Now you have to prove it in the same way that if you said there is God, I go well. Can you demonstrate that? Can you? Correct. I can't prove you there is no God. I can't. I don't believe that. No, you can't. necessarily no God, it's just that... Oh, so, so I'm a bit, I'm a bit confused. The evidence yeah. hasn't been brought to me. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's to say, okay, there is positive... So I don't, Absolutely. At the moment, that's I, fine. the best thing I've got is yeah. the likelihood is gods don't exist and they are part of... Based on what? How, what we make up and it's come from how... Right, so, so you say that um, man was not made in God's image but um, God was made in man's image. I think that's... that's your doctrine of your... Okay. So there are many arguments for God's existence, and as a theist, and as someone who has a, a, a big passion for philosophy, yeah. uh, I'm convinced by the, the philosophical arguments for God's existence, namely the fact that uh, there's a moral argument that I base my grounding of objective morality in the fact there is an objective source, and that is the grounding for both moral values and moral duties. I find that to be satisfactory and the best explanation of my own experience, my moral experience. There's another one, which is the Kalam cosmological argument, so namely the fact that everything that begins to exist has a cause, the universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. Yeah. And then we can derive from that, if that conclusion goes through, that whatever that cause is, it has to be outside of time, outside of space, and powerful. I think that's a, a good basis for a generic god of some sort. I mean, you know, I mentioned the atheist experience. So I'm yeah, yeah. I mean, they would talk about stuff like that. So you need moment, to give, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the equivalent of sort of dipping my little toe in, in the, the sea of philosophy. Oh, right, cool, um, yeah. Because that's where our, most arguments for gods are. But yeah, yeah. there's a lot that I'm, I have to begin understanding before I sure. try to argue that with you because... Uh, yeah, fans. I've, yeah, I've got my own ones, yeah. What do you need them for? Just to see whether mine's recorded onto the... Give these a go. Yeah, hopefully they will. Cheers. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot about that. Uh, okay. Hatton's got some. Uh, okay. uh, no worries, no worries. Yeah, yeah no. I, I couldn't try to, you know, take you on. You're not confident enough that you have, that you have enough information about that to be able to you respond know, what I'm to saying. Argue okay. Philosophically, it's yeah. fascinating. It is really fascinating philosophy. Um, yeah, I, I would encourage you to, to explore yeah, it. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm trying to find like an even course or little things that I can begin to kind of find my way through. It. Well, if you want to uh, know about the theistic position, I, I would suggest William Lane Craig as a resource. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. They, they probably talk about. Yeah. He, he's probably the most common, the most common one. Uh, he's he's a well-known debater. Uh, no, but... Okay, well there's a vegan group over there if you want to check out the footage and discover the vegan. I'll come and talk to you guys. Oh, vegan ladies there. Yeah, okay. no, right. <laughs> It's a good, good, uh, good lore there, I guess. Straight there, why not? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, no, I'd be in trouble. I have to go, so... Yeah. <laughs> well, fair play, fair play. But, um, there are arguments, and there are reasons. Uh, I would encourage you to explore them. Um, I find them satisfying personally. Uh, it's not the only reason I'm a Christian. That I think that it's not enough just to have uh, rational arguments to, you can't sort of reason someone into Christianity because Christianity is not just a, a rational position, that's not what it is. It, it, I mean, you've probably heard this before, but it is a, ultimately a fulfilling relationship with God and hence there is reason involved, but it's not all just reason. So, um, so I would see it that way. What, what about, I mean, how do you, um how do you read some of the bits that are in that Bible? And because you know, you have to be honest, there, there are some horrible things in, in the There are some the challenging Bible. things, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I definitely so, agree. How do you, 
when I was a kid and I was in the, the kids part of the, the Bible reading group, they just went, you know, God done the flood and, and everything was great. But when you're a kid, you don't really think about it properly until maybe later on you go, anyway, so he does this flood. Yeah. Lots of people drown. Yes. So how can that be a loving God that's going to go, I made a mistake and I'm just going to drown everyone apart from a few people to be happen to be on this yeah. boat that reasonably they couldn't build. Um, yeah, it depends on when you take how, a literal view of whether it's a global flood or a local is, flood. This and, is a good yeah. God because if me as a human, not as a God, looks at the same issue, I can go, why would I, why would I murder all these people because I made one mistake? There, there's, there's better ways so to So are you problem. familiar with the, the, the biblical narrative? Isn't merely that God decided one day Hey Noah, get on this boat. I'm going to float everything. There we go. I, I Starting again. A very short version. Well, what I mean is, is that God gave the peoples of the of the world, or according to the narrative, of the people of the time, apple, uh, a, apple, ample, ample chance to turn away from what they were doing. Now, if you read the Old Testament, you will find a lot of times, God, when speaking Yahweh, he specifically stops and he says, just to remind you guys, killing children is wrong. Like, stop doing it. Like, stop sacrificing children to Malik. It's, it's, it's a horrible, forbidden thing. You should stop doing it. And these are the kind of practices that people were involved in from a pagan perspective. Um, they also did other things as well, but this is one of the things that God makes it clear that he really hates that particular thing. But he gives them ample chance to say, look, we're going to repent, we're going to stop doing it, and we'll be fine. In fact, if you look at the narratives, God actually takes the Israelite people and he gives visual signs that he is there. You need to remember, he actually visibly shows that he is the head of the Israelite people. He, has a, he appears as a, a cloud of fire and a pillar of light, and he, he says, look, I am with these people, I can visually show you. I'm going to part the ocean, I will give you visual signs that these people are protected, and I am the true God, and I, hey, man, and I am with these people. Now, yeah. History, Mike, yeah, he's a lovely guy. Yeah, he's cool. Um, so, it, the narrative, there's a bit more thing involved in that with why God chooses to make this choice. Now, there is something called theodicy in Christianity, which is when you look at why God may have had reasons to do certain acts. Now, I'm not going to tell you that we know these, all these reasons. We don't. There are some things that only God knows the reasons as to why he did. I can't give you a comprehensive, 100% fully explain the mind of God to you, because no one can. No one can at all. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, yeah. I would probably agree if there was a God, yeah. we are gods up there, and we're just humans. Yeah. I mean, I mean even if you... understand something beyond us as humans. Right, so, so they're, they're, it would make sense given that we're limited in, in our nature as, huma as humans that we would only know certain things of what God reveals to us. In other words, we can reason about him because we're rational beings, although we're full of emotion and all sorts of other unky stuff, but we do have reason, we can use our reason, God approves and has given us reason, but it's nothing like God's reason. So there's always going to be that disconnect of we're going to see aspects of it, but we're never going to see the full thing. So, that being said, we could reasonably conclude that there would be a disconnect between what we think should happen and what God thinks should happen. We might be like, oh, okay, uh, yeah, the floods are necessary. Actually, you could just do this. But the point is that God actually explains, well, I know how everything is going to play out. He has foreknowledge of all possible events. And therefore, given that by, ne uh, by his own nature, he is the greatest conceivable being, which is the philosophical definition of God, he therefore has to be the greatest moral being he therefore has to be the greatest good. So what he decides has to be working with all possible options, all possible worlds. He is picking the best possible worlds given human freedom. And that's what we would believe as a philosophical approach as to what God is doing. Sorry, sorry can I call they were pointing at you? No, my daughter likes your talk. Oh, cool. Oh, <laughs> hi. <laughs> She's a debate on yeah. Sorry, man. No, sorry. That's not a fan. I'm not a fan. Right. That's cool. Have you seen it, Stranger Things? You know what? It's on my list. It's on my list. Everyone says it's amazing, but right. I'm just not Stay away from Facebook. Don't let it ruin the show because people put spoilers. But yeah. there's the most epic metal moment. Oh, really? Oh, I love metal music. So. God, it's so yeah, yeah, yeah. I love big fan of metal. Yeah, you love metal. Yeah, I love metal. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. You, uh, sorry, I'm distracting. But it's all right. you were talking about. Um, the media, um, 
put this narrative that a video game is evil? Or yeah, it was a conservative yeah, narrative primarily in the 90s and 2000s. Which was yeah. 80s, 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, and the funny thing is, yeah. the Stranger Things, um, kind of, because it's set in the 80s, it kind of uh, shows a little better that in, in the show. And, like, oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly devil, right. Devil, devil's got wicked music taste. So got yeah, I mean, it, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, I, I, well, I actually think. The whole fear thing then. It, it, yeah, I know, absolutely, else. absolutely. There's always been stuff like that. There's always been stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Um, these, you know, there, is, there has been incorrect and wrong conservative Christian views. There yeah. has been. But remember that that's just one aspect of one group's opinion. There are Christians as well that have differing opinions. I know. Anyway, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you will meet. Christians who are just going to, they come with a lot of emotion and they want to they want to tell you about hellfire and they want to say you need to repair you know. and I do agree that you do need to come to Christ like I, I, and that's what I'm offering you today I'm not, I'm not inviting you in any church, I'm not inviting you in any religion I'm simply saying look at what Christ taught read the earliest manuscript accounts and, and give your life to him because he is I, I worthy of doing so. I, I don't agree with giving my life to someone. I don't agree with well, following something. Well, let's put it this you way. Right, you, you, you should do so in an informed opinion, right? But whether we like it or not, we do give our lives to something. Some people will give their lives to money. Some people will give their lives to women. Some people will give their lives to heavy metal music, maybe. Like, it depends, yeah. <laughs> we all give our lives to something. The question is exactly what it is. I would say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's what he claims of himself. He doesn't, get, he doesn't say, look, I'm just a good guy. He, doesn't, he isn't just saying, look, I'm going to do something nice to you. He says, I am the one who was before all things. And he is the true God. And he, is, he has come in flesh as a person of Jesus Christ. And he gave his life to say, look, I'm going to pay it for you. When he was dying, he said, look, they don't know what they're doing. But I'm doing this for all humanity. No matter who you are or where you come from, there's always that option to you. But anyway, I'm just going to say, look into the theistic point of view. William Lane Craig is someone I would recommend as being uh, a, a populist and also a scholar. Look at his popular work, it's a bit easier to understand uh, and to get into. And, and give it an intellectual shot. Give it an intellectual shot. Well, I, I watch um, the Atheist Experience, I sure. to it on the podcast. So Look at, um, going back oh, that's fine. Uh, back and forth, that's great. So. Keep watching the Atheist Experience, but also look at the Christian equivalents. Because Christians have some as well. Yeah, so no, Unbelievable would be a good one I recommend as a podcast. And they have Bart Ehrman on, Richard Dawkins has been on. They have atheists on and they have debates. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Cool. Um, Broaden your uh, horizon. Um, because part of the reason, well, I, what I'm trying to do is maybe represent atheism and Satanism. The point is that where, where a lot of people will go, oh, you're a Satanist, you must be connected with evil, or you must be automatically horrible or wrong, or all these things. Do you think that so far as um, in the time you match up, you're able to say you've spoken to Satanists? So oh, yeah, yeah. There, there are some Satanists. Nice there are actually, yeah. it, 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 again, it always depends on which kind of Satanist you talk to, because there are many who are, there are atheists or who have uh, an interest in freedom of speech and freedom of rights. They have an interest in critical thought. I've met many people like that who are lovely people. Absolutely. And, and you, you, you appear to be one of them. We've had a great, yeah, lovely I'm chat. Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, absolutely. There are Man, technically a subgroup that do try and do that, I, uh, but they're very secretive. Uh, however, I have met people who were part of that group, uh, and I get my information from them having them, uh, they're, they're Christian now, thank God, but they, they used to partake in those kind of groups. Yeah. But it's, it's quite secretive. But anyway, should we leave it at that for today? We can um, leave it at that, and if I see you again, I'll chat to you again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Martin, was it, yeah? Oh, oh. yeah. Chris, uh, <laughs> have a lovely time here, and thanks for the chat. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm probably going to be burnt already, but yeah, it's a good idea. All right, God bless my friends. Take care, take care. I always forget about the wrap-ups. So I had a, a really nice, pleasant, calm chat with a man who calls himself an, uh, an atheist, but also was a Satanist. Um, but it was clear that the way that he meant that was uh, in a Satanist as the atheistic way, the critical of religion way. Um, but like I said, we had a great chat. It was very pleasant. Um, he wasn't aware of the theistic arguments um, for Christianity. Uh, I encouraged him to go and look at those arguments because I think that will give him a much better, more unbiased sided uh, perspective as he's getting his information from the atheist experience, which I think is very much in favour of atheism and not so much about giving a fair shot to, to theists. 
Uh, I told him that I call him to be a disciple of Christ and that that would be a much better path for him to take, that he can do so in a rational and intelligent way. And I hope he takes that seriously. I hope he looks into these arguments. And Lord willing, I hope he abandons Satanism and becomes a, a Christian. God bless. There you go.